Comic Impact. We got Tim Bradstreet here, the guy who does all those amazing Punisher covers. He's involved in movies and novels and all sorts of things. How are you today? Stuff. Stuff? Yeah, lots of stuff. Stuff. I'm good, man. I'm uh, hanging, yeah. hanging out at uh, the Long Beach Comic Con, man. It's awesome. Oh, that's right, the Long my, Beach Comic Con. One of my forgot. favorite shows. Yeah. Uh, it's all in its second year. Yeah. Um, but it's it's kind of like right in my backyard and, and uh, in San Diego. I mean, it's, like, it's, it's what you call your backyard. Yeah. Um, so it's a close it's a close by show that uh, is awesome because uh, really the only other kind of Southern California show is San Diego Comic Con, and it's so huge. Yeah. It's so impersonal. Yeah. Um, I love doing this show because it's it's a lot more uh, intimate. Well, I think they love having you here because they had you at the opening ceremony this morning. Yeah. Yeah, I think I got I got lumped into that because uh, Jane, Tom Jane, was going to be involved in that, uh -huh. and then and then he, his daughter had a play, so he couldn't come. So, uh, okay. but uh, yeah, they, they wrote me into talking and stuff. Well, I, I thought it was nice to see you out there. Well, that was cool. That's cool. Um, Glad there was a good response. Yeah. So, I, I you've been working with Tom and Jane a lot, right? The uh, yeah yeah Raw, Raw Entertainment. That's what it's called. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. we started it. Uh, back around the time that he was doing pr press and promotion on The Punisher in 2004. Okay. And he pitched me an idea of a comic book. And he had this idea that he always wanted to do a comic book uh, called Bad Planet. And he, uh, during the course of creating Bad Planet, we decided we wanted to start a little boutique publishing company um, to do our stuff. And uh, to be a platform for, you know, whether... I mean, we did, we did Bad Planet to never thinking about a movie. Uh, but we thought, well, this would be a good platform to bring IPs or ideas that we have and take them all the way. So it's, it's uh, you know, Raw Studios, Raw Entertainment, so it's comics publishing, yeah. uh, book publishing, and then also production, uh, film production. Did uh, Raw Entertainment, did, did they do Dark Country? No, it, essentially, yes. Yeah. Essentially, yes. No, it wasn't too early, but okay. um, it, it, that wasn't the kind of deal we struck with Sony and Hyde uh -huh. Park. Um, I, I think Tom... Tom gave up certain things to be able to direct it, and, yeah. and uh, but it was me and Tom. We're raw. We were yeah. production designer and director, and uh, and so yeah. I mean, we were we were half of that production. So. Yeah. And the movie looks great. Like, I, yeah. So what about uh, your comics? Are you just doing the covers still for uh, Bad Planet, or do you do the interiors? Uh, yeah, we're just about to launch Bad Planet Two. Uh -huh. um, but what we've done is we've gone out and we've got this artist Greg Staples, who's amazing. So I'm not actually drawing any of it. Oh, okay. I'll do a cover. Yeah. And we'll do the same thing we did last time. We get these murderers, this murderers row of covers. Like the oh. first series, we had Kaluta, um, Bernie Wrightson, Mark Schultz, Dave Stevens, his last comics cover. Um, and then I, I did a cover in there. Which one of these things doesn't belong here? Um, <laughs> and uh, we're going to do the same thing with uh, the second series. We're going to bring in. We got you know we have Basil Gogos do our trade and collection cover, and we'll do something very similar. I think Schultz will be back, and maybe William Stout, and so some real you know heavy hitters when it comes to legendary comics illustrators on the covers. And Greg Staples, the uh, interior guy, man, the stuff he's doing is just absolutely. Yeah. Just, I wanted to ink him, but he, uh, he wanted to ink himself, and that's something that I can't. You know, you, you can't compete with and you don't want to step on someone's toes yeah. in that way. You know, if, if the guy wants to take it in that direction and he wants to be the guy, uh -huh. um, then we want, you know, we're artist friendly. So you did like, what, 150 covers for The Punisher? <laughs> yeah, something like that. Yeah, And then, you know, I saw a lot of like promo art with Thomas Jane as The Punisher. Right, right. Did you ever get just tired of drawing The Punisher? I, I think I, I hit a point during the Marvel Knights run. Uh -huh. where I just felt like I was spinning my wheels because I was just trying to re you know, redo the same concept yeah. on every cover. And, um, and then the movie was announced, the, uh -huh. the Tom Jane one in 2004, and I kind of found uh, another gear. Mm -hmm. And I, I think I finished that run really strong, but when it went to Max, and it was being relaunched as a Ma Max's inaugural book, uh, Axel Alonso, who I'd worked with on Hellblazer, um, wasn't sure that, you know, he, I think he was thinking he might want to bring some new blood in on it, and he was concerned that um, I wasn't doing my best work on, on the Marvel Knights series, and uh, and I, I talked him into it. Okay. I said, uh, you know, I didn't, I'd never had an editor on Marvel Knights, so I had no real, uh, you know, uh, guidance. Yeah. It was up to me. It was just, my art direction consisted of the week before a cover was due, I'd get an email, the cover's due in a week. That was my editorial uh, Input. Um, and with the work that Axel and I had done at Vertigo on Hellblazer and on Gangland and, 
Human Target and a lot of those other books, uh, I said, you know, working with an editor who cares about his books and who has great vision for, for what the series needs to be and represent, I don't think you have to worry about me bringing my A-game, you know? Yeah. So I convinced him, and, and luckily I did because uh, Marvel Knights was the most enjoyable run of the Punisher for me because as a fan of the character, yeah. um, that is the quintessential Frank Castle. Yeah, uh, that stuff was amazing. I liked drawing him 50, you know? Uh -huh. the guys. Yeah, he fought in the Vietnam East War. Yeah, he's, 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 a, he's a Clint Eastwood yeah. 50. And there's no super villains. Yeah, I, and think no... I think you're kind of seeing that a lot now. You know, yeah. they're with uh, like Die Hard 4 that came out, and they're still doing Indiana Jones. I think people prefer the older guys. Yeah, and a lot of these action. Well, I, I think it's I think it's just becoming more accepted that you don't have to be 25 years old to be yeah. an action star, 30. Um, that as long as the material is good, they'll watch anybody. Yeah, I mean, and especially if the performance is there. Um, for a long time, people just didn't think that. You know, movie studios didn't think it would, you know, make any money to, to do something like that, or you couldn't, you couldn't, you couldn't create a franchise around something like that. Yeah. Like Clint Eastwood hadn't been doing it for 35 years. <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, so it takes a special thing, but it also takes a great script and a great concept. But if, it, if you have those, I've always been interested in that. Yeah. Um, I pitched Bruce Jones a, a Captain America concept a couple years ago. Where, Captain America's like 60 years old and retired and put out the pasture, and, but he's a Clint Eastwood 60, right? He's, yeah. He's a super soldier. Yeah. He's two, ten Clint Eastwoods. And because he knows so much, uh, they can't really allow him to be out there because he could get kidnapped and yeah. bled for information, all this stuff. So they send a hit, and this new political regime comes in and they send a hit squad off him and just take him out, kind of just before the board supremacy and stuff like that. But. Uh, a little while back, but you know the the protagonist was a senior citizen. I mean, yeah. granted, a badass senior citizen, but um, you know Nick Fury was going to come into it, and like it just, and that just appeals to me greatly yeah. because there's a lot of character there. I think. Yeah, you know, I'd that, buy that. You know, it's like I, I'd rather watch uh, Clint Eastwood or Bruce Willis than Channing Tatum. You know, it's just like I don't know. Maybe he'll get there someday, but I think you know age adds character. So. Uh, Back to the Punisher, was there any like special techniques? You were mentioning something about a model. Did you always, do you work with models a lot? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I drew from my head to the board for uh -huh. 25 years. Not like quite 25 years, but for a, for a good portion of my career. And then I, uh, I, I just wasn't satisfied with it. It was something that I, I was seeing things cinematically, and what I was, I, I had to bring a tool into it, you know, and I had yeah. to try something. And I, and I ended up taking to it really like, it just seemed so natural, um, and so I, I jumped off, uh, you know, into that while I was still working a role playing game, and so that's a natural part of my process. And uh, you know, I've come under fire a lot for it. And I come under, you know, I, I, I see message boards and I see people talk and stuff like that. And I've, I've it actually, matter. I've actually Screw read. Guys. I know, I know, I know that. But I mean, you know, they don't know how much work actually yeah. does. And yeah, because I just trace the photograph. That's how easy it is. Um, uh. But. Uh, uh, it's funny. I've seen I've seen people react to it. They're just like they were big fans of mine, and then they found out I used photos. They they couldn't be a fan of mine anymore. It's just so silly. Yes. But uh, yeah. So I'm I'm an, I'm an Ill, I'm very much more an illustrator that, that works in comics, uh -huh. which is tough because it's such a traditionalist medium, you know. Yeah. But kind of the, the for the Punisher, it was like, come on. I mean, that was that was the whole point. Is when they asked me if I wanted to do Welcome Back, Frank. Uh -huh. which was first Punisher kind of when Garth took the book over. Yeah. Um, they, you know, Jimmy Palmiotti said, you know, you got to do the Punisher. And I said, I'd love to do it, but I, I can't draw him in the tights and the, the white boots. If I do it, I, I want to make him realistic. I don't, you know, like black leather coat, yeah. like black combat pants. I think like, that was what everybody loved about that book. And he, and he said, do it, you know? Yeah. And so that's when we changed it. And the funny thing is, is when they were getting ready to do the movie, they were trying to get Tom Jane to star in it, and, and he didn't want to be in it because he couldn't, he was like, I, I don't want to wear the costume. And yeah. Then they showed him the Max books, and, and he was like, oh, wow. I mean, yeah. and so when he saw the character in that light, it, it made sense. Well, I really appreciate you let, letting us borrow you. For sure. Is uh, there anything else you want to put out there? Anything you're working on? Uh, you want to look for? Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm, the, the thing I'm really excited about right now that I can talk about 
is uh, this Red Sky Diary thing that I've been a project of mine on the back burner since the early 90s um, that I am going to follow through with. Okay. And doing that right now uh, by writing, um, which is something that always, you know, writing always intimidated me. But I'm finding it just as enjoyable as art, okay. which is a good sign. That's good. Um, we just hope that the writing's good. Yeah. I like what, what's happening, but we'll see. An illustrated novel. Okay. I'm going to keep my eyes out for that. And it's going to yeah. kick. I'll take your word for it. It's going to slay. Awesome. It's a period piece. Okay, when does it take place? Uh, latter half of the 19th century, so we're talking about... Okay. But, but it takes place in like the Middle East. It okay. starts out in the Middle East. It's a it's a journey, so it doesn't stay there. But okay. It's, it, you know... It's the kind of thing that's fantasy in that it's it's fantasy and science fiction and horror and all that stuff, but it's it's so removed from uh, society and I mean it all it's all takes place in remote locations. So there's this like it's its own world kind of yeah. thing. And, and uh, I, I couldn't have you want I want to take somebody out of their seats and out of their day to day, and I want to transport them somewhere. Okay. Them, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. That's where I want to go. <laughs> I'm sure you'll get there. Yeah, thank you, man. <laughs> thank you so much. Really appreciate it. For sure. For sure. Hero Tim Initiative. Tim Bradstreet. Hero Initiative. Don't forget. Hero Initiative. Cheers. Cheers.